All right, we're going to do a quick review um, of the virology material we covered, which was mostly just an introduction um, to some things like structured life cycle, um, and then the classification of uh, virus, and how um, different types of genomes the, that the virus have is one way of classifying it. Uh, and then I want you to be able to explain how the genomes can be um, replicated and their genes are expressed depending on what type of genome they have. So that's um, the whole thing quickly. I'm going to go over some of the, the, the basics of it as a quick review. So you need to know structures, so make sure you know different types of structures of uh, viral capsids, right? So we have a capsid, that's the structure here made up of protein um, that is surrounding the viral genome, which is in here. Okay, so the viral genome is inside the capsid. The genome is gonna be either DNA or RNA, double-stranded DNA, double-stranded RNA, single-stranded DNA, single-stranded RNA. So that's what we'll get into with this. Um, the capsid could be naked, like this one here. There's no thing around it. Or a capsid could be um, enveloped, right? So, and that um, will lead into talking about some of the other parts of the life cycles, you know, as well, uh, how that would uh, link in. But here, the viral particle is inside um, an envelope, which is uh, like a uh, cell membrane. And so this also helps disguise it um, from the immune system. Uh, and it can help, and it can help it um, attach to the cell. So when we talk about life cycle, this is the thing to, to think. Um, what are you being asked? Specifically, so you need to know specifically what it is you're being asked to explain. The most generic aspect of viral life cycle all right, is attachment, okay? Starting off here. Somehow it attaches to the host cell. All right, this is the idea with the bacteria phage here, okay? You have the uh, tail pins and all attaching here to the cell. An enveloped one would attach in a different way. It would attach using the, the envelope itself to the cell membrane, uh, fusing together, bringing the whole particle into the cell. So different ways that a virus can attach to the host cell, um, but that would be the first part of it. I'm not talking about lytic or lysogenic right now. I'm talking just about overall life cycle, all right, and, and how uh, the virus exists and then infects a cell and then, and then uh, is replicated and so on. And then these are sort of specialized different variations of the life cycle, which we'll also get into. Okay, so what happens is then the infection, uh, the actual, the genetic material, uh, the viral genome now is moved into the host cell, right, or the whole viral particle, which eventually then releases the genome into the cell. Okay. Once that happens, we then enter into something like the, let's say we'll talk about the lytic cycle first. Right. And in this lytic cycle, what would occur uh, is that we kind of get into the basic phases of the viral life cycle. So the host cell's DNA gets sort of chopped up and used as raw material. Right. So the genome is sort of destroyed uh, right from the start. That material is used to make copies of the viral genome. So we get genome replication. Remember, it's the host cell's DNA polymerase going to do this. Um, when we get to the next part, it's the host cell's RNA polymerase and ribosomes that are doing this. The bacteria doesn't bring any of these enzymes along with it. It's why it needs the host cell, because the host cell uh, is required to actually make all of the uh, molecules that are used to build the virus and that build the virus genome as well. So we're gonna have that happen. We're also going to have at the same time, uh, some of the original viral genome that got into the cell uh, is also gonna go through uh, gene expression. So gene expression is gonna make viral proteins. Right, so what are those viral proteins? Well, a lot of them are going to be the proteins that make up 
the capsid structure. Now that it's not going to be all assembled like that. That's a whole that's a whole other stage called assembly. What we usually have, if you remember, uh, and what you and you need to remember because you need to review this, uh, they're going to be early, mid, and late proteins. So for the gene expression, the entire viral genome isn't expressed all at once. What we have is certain proteins, say uh, the proteins that are going to make a scaffold to help in the assembly of the capsids will need to be produced before we finish making the capsids. So they have to come first. So there's there's stages, a uh, sequence to this um, that is somewhat logical. At the end, the very late one, we'll get a lysozyme, something that's actually going to lyse the cell membrane of the bacteria. We wouldn't produce that early on in the beginning before we assemble the particles because then it would burst the cell before anything got put together um, and, that, and then the, the virus would not be replicated at all. So there is a sequence gen generally um, to those events and how they occur. And that's what's going to happen. They're going to be happening at the same time. Genome replication is going to start right at the beginning. It's one of the first things and it's going to continue uh, the entire time until really right before the very end. Um, the gene expression is going to happen starting very early as well using uh, transcription. So we're going to go from uh, tip typically DNA to RNA depending, we'll get into the Baltimore system in a bit, uh, what type of genome that the virus has. But you're going to express viral proteins one way or the other. And then they're going to ultimately assemble into the viral particles. The viral genomes will get packaged up into those particles. And then eventually they will be released you know, from that host cell. And then they'll go on to be able to infect other cells and start the whole process all over again. So then there'll be a release at the end. So that would be right after the, the latest proteins are made, the last, last ones, it would then kind of release them. So just kind of go through the overall steps of life cycle as a generic thing, not specifically lysogenic or, or, or lytic, just kind of those steps, attachment, the infection, the replication, the assembly, and then the release, okay, that, that part of it. Now, that overlaps with the lytic cycle. So one type, type of variation to the life cycle is called a lytic cycle, where immediately those things happen, just as what I said, and it ultimately results in the host cell lysing, its cell membrane breaking down, uh, dying, and then all the viral particles are released. So it reaches sort of a burst size where there's so many particles inside the cell, then eventually the lysozyme is released, and then, and then it's burst. Now, another option is we can have a host cell uh, who has its DNA combined with a viral genome. So the viral genome comes into the cell, but then instead of immediately going into this process, what happens is that the viral, now this is typically would need to be double-stranded DNA for this to work, right? Because if that was single-stranded RNA, it's not going to become integrated into double-stranded DNA of a chromosome of a host. So you either have to have a, be a virus whose genome is double-stranded DNA or a virus who can go from some other form like RNA to double-stranded DNA, like a retrovirus. We see this incorporation. Now what could happen is sort of a a hiatus, nothing, nothing is really happening. We're not really entering into the, this phase here. The, the cell itself could divide, you know, potentially into to two new cells through binary fission, if, if it's a bacterial cell. It can also happen in uh, eukaryotic cells too. Okay, and actually, but getting, if you remember, the viral DNA in here. So we can make copies of the cell and the viral DNA is there in the cell. And so it's just kiting out. This is our lysogenic cycle. Now something also to keep in mind as a related topic, right, is that the lysogenic cycle uh, is related to transduction, right? Well, if you remember, transduction is where a virus infects a cell and it brings along with it DNA from another bacteria. So let's say maybe a little bit of this 
is actually DNA from a different bacteria, a bacteria that it infected before it infected this cell, now bringing along that piece of DNA with it. So now these cells here who aren't actually expressing the viral proteins, or they're not acting as if they've been infected, they've just picked up new genes, and some of those genes are viral, and some of those genes are from another bacteria, if it was transduction. And so they could potentially be expressing genes of another bacteria right now, and they could be beneficial genes. So in terms of our uh, idea of horizontal gene transfer, which was on the uh, third exam, this is part of that uh, process. Okay. Um, we could also have things occur, but you might say, oh, but then the cell's just going to die, and then it doesn't, not, it doesn't really help the bacteria gain um, diversity, genetic diversity, because it's going to die very soon anyway. Um, but remember that bacterial cells can identify and potentially remove the foreign DNA, the viral DNA, using the process that we have developed into our CRISPR technology to identify that and cut it out. And so that could happen, and then it may leave behind the bacterial DNA from another cell, and now this bacteria has been uh, transduced, it's been changed by gaining new DNA from another bacteria, increasing its diversity. Right? And it's not infected actually even anymore with the virus, if that were the case, if it if it's, was able to identify it and remove it. But what we're talking about is viral infection, so we're keeping the virus in there. Ultimately, uh, the viral genome is removed. Once it's removed, and so something usually causes this, so there's usually some type of trigger, like a stress that would cause this or a signal. Uh, and then we essentially enter into what would be the, the lytic stage. So the viral genome is removed. We're going to start to express the viral genes. We're going to trigger that cell to start making copies of the viral genome. Um, it will then destroy the viral the chromosome of the host cell. And then it'll just go through all the stages of making all the different types of proteins, assembling the viral particles, and then releasing the viral particles. So, that, so the lysogenic stage is cycle is sort of separate from lytic, but yet the two are connected. If you're lytic, you're not at all lysogenic, okay? So which means if you're lytic, you just immediately enter this stage of reproducing the virus and then destroying the cell, unless there's some other option like making the enveloped virus where the cell may, you know, instead of lysing, it may bud like this, and then you actually end up with uh, viral particles, you know, in an envelope without actually lysing the cell. So that that's a possibility. But in general, we're talking about lysis of the cell ending ending this whole thing. Lysogenic is sort of where there. This is essentially put on hold for a while. It's not that it's not going to happen, or that it's a totally different process. It's just that first we're going to hide out in the host cell's DNA, and then we'll eventually uh, have this occur. And then you can make sure you review the generalized specialized transduction so you can see the, understand the link between them. So um, there's not enough room here for me to talk about the uh, Baltimore system and expression, so I'll erase this and then we'll start that um, as the next uh, bit of the review.